The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church age, what can we tell that we have been called out as ecclesia? What could we be made known apart from the completed canon of scripture, which is the only truth in our hands. And what could be more emphasized for us than to grow upon by resuming your resumption of your spiritual life when you have been taken care of back by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when you use rebound. To get back in fellowship with Him and apply number one priority for doctrine and cleanse out the garbage of your soul and be thoroughly prepared by the time you need to be communicators of the word and why you still desire the milk rather than eating solid food. How many of the people have really made known to look and understand what is the solid food in Christ? What is the truth of reality in the law? How many of the people have come really to understanding of the scripture, which tells to us very clearly what are we in Lord, and why are we in Lord, and where are we in Lord? And why aren't we capable of understanding the privacy of our priesthood is so much essential, that once and for all the confession of our sins which Lord God the Father has done for us, this is through his royal high priest. And when we again sin after knowing our Lord, we have to go through the process of the advocacy which our Lord Jesus Christ stands there. Between Satan and us, as an advocate, to go and to appeal the case and take it and solve it out. And now makes it as a family matter. And in the family matter, what we are to do, we are to be very thoroughly careful to know that no longer we are in sin. But now we have to look the procedure why Lord has designed for us. The greater our failure to be designed to know, to look and to understand, the greater will be our failure to be consistent enough to learn the knowledge of Christ, to grow up in the knowledge of Christ, and to take number one priority as the knowledge of Christ goes. The only reason why are we so much negligent? The only reason why are we so much not capable of understanding the truth? Is purely because the only reason of failure to know that you are the person pertaining to the priesthood of Christ. That you are alekeniketesus in Christ. You are spiritual species in Christ. And the privileges given to you are far greater than anything else in this world can be occupied. The privileges of polytema, the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the movement of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. The completion of completed canon of scripture in our hands. The indwelling invisible trinity in us so that we can become in return invisible hero. And to obtain this, you have an object of course, which is nothing but, number one, the protocol plan of God, this unique spiritual life, spiritual self-esteem, our spiritual autonomy, and then the spiritual maturity. And in order to attain it, where do you have the scriptures? We have the completed canon in our hands. The faith was drill going out in the Old Testament times, looking upon the prophecies which have to be fulfilled in a millennium after their church rapture. Those prophecies will be fulfilled in the rapture, after the rapture of the church, not before that. Because church age is a deadlock period for the prophecies. This church age is a period of no emotion, period of no prophecy. This church age is a pure age of Bible doctrine. That's it, the mind of Christ to be concentrated. That we now being a peculiar people in the New Testament, 
have to be thoroughly equivalent to all good works. And good works doesn't come for you to look upon the energy of your flesh, but good works come, the divine good from the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's where the good works come. And from there on, you need to grow up in a day-by-day -day process, in a day-by-day -day method, in a day-by-day -day technique. And from there on, no matter what it comes, you need to stand up for number one priority for doctrine. And greater our failure to understand the priority for doctrine, greater will be our failure to represent Christ as loyally as he had to be represented on this earth. And we are not justifying the privileges that has been given to us, and we are not glorifying our Lord to the maximum, wherewith these privileges will definitely teach to us what are we doing in our Christ, to the Lord, to the praise of his glory. We just enjoy those stupidified things, stupidified thoughts, stupidified methods. Only for our sheer hypocritical standards to be expressed before the congregation, before the men. But never will be coming to a position to fight the inheritance among the saints which has been given to us. And how can we be qualified to know and to look and to understand the inheritance given to us among that saints, among those people? We are not. We are not capable. We are not understanding. We are not looking. But rather, what are we doing, dear brother, no, here on this earth? We are just wasting our time. And where are we wasting? Have you ever noted? We are wasting in the lust patterns of our old sin nature. We are wasting because of our mental attitude sins, indifference towards the pastor who teaches to you the doctrine. And wherein we have to be counted worthy to the praise of his glory, there we are considering what is the use of to be praising to be worthy to the praise of his glory. And just pass down with the things necessary for you to go and leave behind all this kind of stupidified thoughts and concentrate upon legalism and think that this could be great, that could be great, and follow those words. It's a great shame on our part to note these things, dear brethren, as we are journeying around as a pilgrimage trips in this earth. Lord has set you apart, positionally superior, then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan, at the moment of salvation, by faith alone in Christ alone. Never you will imagine what Lord has made unto you. Never you will come to know how much Lord has really bestowed upon you, and what things he has really graciously granted to you, so that you can be his son representing the true will of Jehovah, dear brother. Never you will come to know. And the failure on all of these things is what? Purely by the failure of a pastor teacher to know the responsibility, the one who is holding the keys. And he has not entered, neither he had made others to be entering into that. That will be to the main problem as we go through. And that is what it is happening in our day-to-day -day lives. Today, the Christian's privilege of becoming an invisible hero, of having as an invisible hero, is being absolutely infringed. Many ministers neglect the responsibility to teach their listeners Bible doctrine, but instead go at them to become involved in emotionalism, personality cults, church programs, social work, or political activisms. And trends in Protestant Christianity show signs of an imbalance which emphasize the visible at the expense of the invisible. The material at the expense of the spiritual, the believer's overt image at the expense of the inner dynamics of Bible doctrine in the soul. And this problem takes root because into the ignorance of the doctrine of dispensations, the overwhelming majority of Christians today do not know what God has provided for them or why he has given them so much. They do not know after salvation what it is. What does God desire the Christian to do? If believers do not realize that they belong to the royal family of God, how can they fulfill their destinies, dear brethren? How can they execute the protocol plan of God for the church age? If they do not know there is such kind of a plan which exists for them, and if they have to go through the process of day-by-day -day learning, inculcation under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, provided they have a right and positive desire to know the truth, without having any other prejudiced or biased mind having only purely to the principle of the reality of the word to tell to them to the point of considering that you need to have a pure and earnest desire to know the truth so that no matter what it is 
that ignorance can easily undercut every good intention. Therefore, a Christian desires to make his life count for God. If he is ignorant of God's plan, he fails to glorify God. And at best, the impact of his life is fleeting, no sooner achieved than dissipated. At worst, his impact is for evil, as he inadvertently struggles in Satan's cause to improve this devil's world. That's what he will end up. That's what the Pentecostal crowds are doing. That's what the pastors are running around, not only to develop the devil's world, but rather, but rather develop their own world as well, because to earn money, 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 money. That's it. And they're happy around to earn money. And they don't have any other trends apart from money. Why they start up a ministry? Because it is like a small piggy bank. Squeeze the money by telling, take tithes. When the New Testament doesn't speak about tithes, they want to proclaim about tithes. When the New Testament, as well as in the Old Testament, doesn't speak about concerning a woman to have authority over the men, they want to say, we will make a woman as a pastor, not only pastor, but a reverend, not only reverend, but bishop. <laughs> the terminology of the words, what they use. They say, such and such woman is a bishop. Such and such woman is a reverend. <laughs> Dear brethren, how great is the, is, is the ignorance in our blindness of our eyes to recognize, to open the mind and look upon the Bible doctrine. You don't open a book, you are reading the mind. You are reading the mind of Christ when you take Bible. You are not just reading the scriptures, which is another book. But we are reading the mind of Christ. That is what we need to look and to know and to understand the ministry of the mind of Christ, we need to know and understand the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because He is the author, He is the revealer. And He is going to get into our mind those things which we forget, saith our Lord in John 16. So, whenever we open a book, we are opening the mind of Christ. And this book, from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 20-21, we are showing forth Christ to the hope of glory. So that by any means, as Apostle Paul was waiting, that he might attain the resurrection of life of Christ. Even we need to have the spiritual resurrection in Christ. This great spiritual resurrection which could be followed and applied and brought back. When we are mastering over the old sin nature. And showing forth, Lord, we are capable of doing greater things for you in this flesh. As you have told for us, we can do greater things for you. We are doing the greater things by mastering over this old sin nature. That is what it is lacking today, the lacking of teaching ministry, the lacking of isagogic, categorics, and exegetical explanation of the word through the dispensing technique of dispensations, dear brethren. Which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue with the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.